Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. This is True Crime and Beauty on Tuesdays. Today we are filming in a different area because the place I normally film is being demoed and redone. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're not new to my channel and you're returning, welcome back. True Crime and Beauty on Tuesdays is where I record, do a true crime video, and put on some makeup to give you guys something to watch while I'm doing the talking, or if you don't want to, just sit the phone down and just listen to it like you would a podcast. These videos do revolve around true crime, so there's going to be graphic content. Speaking of things you may want to or may not want to listen to, if this is not something for you, um, just pop on over to another video and I'll catch you in the next one. This one I'm giving the warning of it's going to have um, sexual assault, murder, prostitution, incest, and things of those natures. If any of these are a trigger warning, please go ahead and just click off like I said. Your mentality is more important than a video, so please take care of yourself. Today we will be speaking on the woman who had nicknames such as the Damsel of Death, the Hooker from Hell. To me, when I was researching this, you have to wonder, was she always destined to follow this path because of how her life started out? Is she really the cold-blooded monster that people want to try to portray her as? Or is she a victim and a survivor? We are talking about Eileen Warnos today. Let's go ahead and get started in this video. I'm going to be a little off kilter because like I said, I'm not in my space. And so I'm not used to this environment. And so it's going to be a little bit awkward for me. Even my lighting is set up strange. I'm going to have to readjust it. Per usual, I'm going to go ahead and just try to tell you or brush over or write in here the products that I am using. Today, I'm going to be using for my brows something new that I haven't used. But like I said before in other videos, I'm going to be using a lot of things that I haven't used before. This is the Morphe Supreme Brow 5-Piece Artist Brow Kit. And this is in the color Java. It's got like the... I like a, their version of the brow freeze, a pomade, um, powder, a pencil, a brush. So we're going to play with this today. Alright my friends, so it's time for you to sit back, relax, grab a snack if you want to, and let me tell you a story. Eileen Warnos was born in Rochester, Michigan, February 29, 1956. She was born to some young parents, and they weren't really feeling like they needed to be parents at the time. She also had an elder brother. His name was Keith. And one day, her parents just decided to drop them off at their grandparents' house and bolt. Unfortunately for Eileen, her father had already committed suicide. It's not really like her her father was, look, I'm just going to say it like this. Her father really wasn't a great guy, her biological father. He was already in jail for child molestation, and so he was in jail when he died, and he committed suicide. I think that he got off easy. He took his own life. I mean, don't know what happened to that child, but I'm pretty sure that child that he molested has some serious trauma. And also, um, I'm going to try to leave the names of victims out, so I'll just kind of give a brief description of what was going on, or just tell you, say victim or victims or whatever. So after moms bailed out and dropped the kids off at grandma and grandpa's and just did not sh want to show back up, it's not like their mom had a great upbringing. Their dad, their mo grandma was a raging alcoholic and their grandfather was sexually abusive and physically abusive and probably emotionally abusive so he was a real super winner himself unfortunately for 
Eileen, she was not in the winning area to start off with. At her young age, she was she was sexually abused by her grandfather and also had strange sexual relationships with her, her brother, her older brother. So it's like she just started off just having this trauma. And the truth is, is when someone starts getting trauma at an early age, that rewires their brain. Any type of trauma as you, even in, you know, after adulthood, you hear about people who are adults and who have had rapes or traumas from the wars. Your brain gets rewired. But when you start off young and having sexual abuse or any type of abuse, your brain does rewire itself. It goes into constant survival mode. At the age of um, 14, it is said that Eileen was a victim of a family friend sexual assault, though it hasn't really been proven as to the tr real truth behind this, but it did make her pregnant. So at 14, she gave birth to a boy and she gave this child up for adoption. Do I know anything about this child? No. Would I track this child down who is now an adult? Absolutely not. We respect their privacy, plus it's probably a closed adoption, which is the best for this person. So as you can see, Eileen did not exactly have like the greatest start in life. And at 14, after going through this, all this sexual assault, all of this rape, all of this just crap going on and just messing with her, her grandparents kicked her booty out of the house at 14. Nowhere to go. Her and her brother had to just beat it, kid. But then again, which was worse? Staying in a house where you're being sexually assaulted and raped and abused? with no protection whatsoever or fending it for yourself out on the streets. I, in this point in time, honestly, the streets probably were better for her because she was gonna take things into her own hands and her life into her own hands. It's gonna take me two videos to try to, at least two videos or, to get through all the stuff that was in that little bundle so today I use the pencil and the brow, the Supreme Brow Clear Setting Gel. And so, yeah, so far I like everything. They turned out good, it's a good color. So since I'm all discombobulated today, we're just gonna go ahead and add to that. I don't ever use concealer for eye primer, but we're gonna use concealer for eye primer and this is gonna be the CoverGirl True Blend Undercover concealer. It's a big old sucker. It's kind of all over the place. I had to move everything in to this area so that I could actually film today. This is like the mid-70s and she had no clue what to do but after the life that she had gone through she decided that she was gonna do sex work to bring in some money and keep her surviving on the streets. As far as her brother, he went one way, she went another, and that's that. Which I don't really think they should have been together anymore anyways, considering he was part of the sexual abuse as well. That's my opinion, and I'm entitled to that. Today for our eye look, we're going to be using Juvia's Place Warrior, and this is the Amazon's collection very pretty highly pigmented fantastic and it's more of a neutral palette so we're just gonna go with a neutral look during her stay as a working gal in this area she decided that this, this that this was just the way to go but she's also had a tendency to get into fights and she had a bit of a temper and I'm not really even knocking that because everything that she had gone through of course she's gonna have 
a temper because, I mean, she went through hell and high water. And I don't blame her one single bit for having a temper girlfriend. You need to, yeah, she had to take care of herself. And she didn't just have to take care of herself, she had to take care of herself from a young age from family members. Do you know how that messes you up? It's like you totally don't even think that anywhere is safe. If you don't have a fam, if you're supposed to be safe with family members and you're not, think about that, what that does to your, your head with safe space. You're always in the fight and survival mode. You don't have a, the option to get out of that mode. Her first arrest that I could find was on drunken disorderly conduct with assault. And I mean, let's just face it, we all saw it coming. Like I said, I don't know if that person deserved it, but she's gonna be kind of a loose cannon because of everything that she went through and the fact that she just was trying to survive. And by the way, I'm gonna reiterate this later on or at the end of the story, but sex work is one of the most dangerous jobs ever, like in the world. It is one of the most dangerous jobs. And it is, they have double the amount of a chance, twice the amount of the chance to be murdered or killed than the people who actually come to them, their clients, their Johns, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So it is so dangerous. It is twice as dangerous as like people who are like fishermen, deep sea fishermen kind of thing. Yeah. It's just, just the statistics are crazy. So after this arrest, she came down to Florida, the sunshine state. She decided that this was going to be her new place. And here she actually met a gentleman who was uh, much older than her, but she really liked him. Maybe she was searching for like that father figure kind of thing, but in not in the, the way that, you know, not in the normal way of having a father figure. She just wasn't really taught the way to have a father figure. She didn't have any really good, um, she didn't have any good examples. If you think about it, this poor woman, her life started off crap and dangerous. And so she gravitated to this gentleman who was a wealthy yachtsman, as they call him. And his name was Louis Fell. And they actually fell in love, or what might be love, who's the judge, and they ended up getting married. But that was a very, very short-lived, so short-lived that it, when she went back to the bars doing her thing, her usual life, he actually, and she ended up getting arrested for assault. He actually did annul the marriage, and you can only annul the marriage within a short amount of time. I think it's like 90 days. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that, but I'm just, I'm guessing. I think it's a, like around that time frame. It's, it's really short. It might, maybe it's a year. I don't know. I will look it up and then maybe like put it into this area somewhere during this video, okay? I think Lewis genuinely thought that he was going to be able to change her and since he was wealthy and all of this stuff, I think that he thought that he was going to be able to tame the beast within her, but he didn't obviously because she got arrested within a short period of time of them getting, a, a, you know, married. Again, she had this inner turmoil going on. And I know some of you are going to be like, oh, you're taking the murderer's side. Look, reading it, listening to her talking, I just, I literally feel for this woman. 
and I am by no means a serial killer like oh I feel so bad for them and all this stuff no no I literally feel bad for her and to me this is going to be up to you to make your own judgments on it we're all entitled to our own opinions but to me reading through this I think she was just surviving her life so after she was basically abandoned again by Mr. Fell, you know, he wasn't really like till death parts us. He was like till you get into another fight again. And then he was out. He was like, peace out. I'm not dealing with your ass. Well, he, w he really wasn't. He was just like over it as soon as she got into that, that fight again. Ten years goes by, and she's, you know, she's back on the street. She's hustle, doing her hustle. She, she's sex working, and just, like I said, she's doing her hustle. She's trying to get through life. She's trying to make ends meet. I read somewhere that the average sex worker brings in about um, $39,000 a year. She was That's what she was going for. She had to make ends meet somehow. And so she was just going from client to client. And in one of her um, interviews, she talked about how she went through, you know, four or five guys a night. And if you think about that, you're going through four or five guys a night and your, your body's being put through whatever they are interested in doing. You are literally at the hands of them. And whatever depravity has them out on the streets looking for a sex worker it's it's like she she doesn't even have she didn't even have the opportunity to be safe at all so she's just taking things into her own hands to do what she needs to do to survive literally just to survive and so over the course of these next 10 years, she does, she gets into varying um, situations of assault and um, fighting and robbery and forging checks and uh, Grand Theft Auto. She's stealing cars. She took the game to the next level. She took it to real life. And she she's just out here doing everything she can to survive and this is all in Florida she's in Florida so she would do this on the highways and things like that she would pick up guys on the highways John's they would go off into the woods or wherever and, and then they would get she would get paid and then they'd be on their way because they didn't want to stick around and be part of you know be seen being with a sex worker for primer on the regular face, we're going to use the NYX Plump It Right Back Up. Then on the face, we're going to use the Too Faced Do You and the concealer Too Faced Born This Way and the CoverGirl uh, concealer that I use on my eyes. During this 10 years, she actually, well, at the, like, around the end of it, she ended up meeting a woman by the name of Tyria Moore and she fell in love with her she this woman was like the first time she had really found and felt love tyria goes by ty okay so from now on i'll be going through and calling her just ty so during the time with ty she was really happy she became like the one that was making the money though Ty did bring in some money doing another job, but basically Eileen was the one who was bringing in all the money. And Ty was about 24 by now, and you know, Eileen was around the same age. So she thought, hey, I found this person, you know, so you know how you find your person? Well, that, that's what she felt. She felt like she found her person late 1889 and the fall of 1990 this is when the murders happened she did actually go along the highways and pick up 
the men, well, the men would pick her up for um, sex work. And I'm going to say this like this so that it is really understood. It is assumed that they were picked up for sex work, like to uh, purchase sexual favors. That it is not proven that this is the truth. Some say she lured them in and then, you know, like lured them to her. That's why they say the damsel of death, like she was a damsel in distress. This is one of those cases where it was very hard for me to be, um, where I was like, oh yeah, they really did it. No, I, I think she did this. I think she killed them. But I don't think it was for the same reasons that everybody is just going to go with. And because as we go on in the story, you're going to really just listen to it. And listen to the unraveling. So in December of 1989, a man's body was found in a junkyard. Over the next few months, another five bodies were found. Some people say that Ty didn't know. Some people say that she did know. I think she knew. She just didn't want to um, kind of be tossed into the ring, the same ring of fire that Eileen was in. So during this time, even though the murders were happening, her and Ty were doing really well. Authorities were soon able to track down her and Ty because of palm prints and fingerprints that were found in the vehicles that were discarded and the vehicles belonged to people that had been um, murdered. So the heat was on and Eileen was actually found at a bar in Port Orange, which I know exactly where that is. But Ty was not found until she was all the way up in Pennsylvania. It's like she made a run for it. The heat got on and she was like, I'm out. I'm not dealing with this. So to avoid getting her booty in a whole heck of a lot of trouble, Ty decided to turn against Eileen. By now, I'm guessing that they weren't together anymore because Ty was ready to save her own tail. She didn't care who she took down with it. She was like, I am saving my butt. And so she made a deal with the authorities that she would get Eileen to confess to everything. You know, and time goes on and Ty is still talking to Eileen, who is in jail. And she's constantly talking to her, you, you know, babe, I, uh, everything's just going, the news is talking about how I did all of this. People are thinking I did all of this. And I just, I'm just so upset and distraught, you know, I'm sure, I'm, I don't know if that's what she said or not, but she was trying to coach a, a a confession out of Eileen and she was she didn't want to be part of it she wanted to make sure that her booty was cleared of everything after a few conversations that's exactly what happened if you see the movie um, monster which is based off the book and it has um, Charlize Theron and Re um, Christina Ricci in it. It was made in 2003. If you see it, um, I think that particular um, conversation really kind of solidified what maybe Eileen was feeling I thought that it was really well done because in the movie you see her kind of just it almost feels like she knew that Ty was getting her to do this confession to save her butt and that's exactly what happened she confessed 
to everything a full confession saying that Ty had nothing to do with it and that it was just all her and boom they got the confession that they wanted and Ty was now the key witness for the prosecution. Once again, someone had betrayed Eileen. It's like she knew nothing but betrayal and danger and fear and pain and suffering and abuse her whole life. And the person she actually thought loved her turned against her that fast. For the use, we're going to use um, two setting powders. This one is the Becca Under Eye and this is the Too Faced Ethereal Setting Powder. So now we've moved on and Eileen is going to trial. Of course she's going to trial. She's got, they've got a confession. And people were flipping out over this. It was a woman serial killer. So the media was in a flipping frenzy over this. I mean, it really does happen like that. Have you ever noticed that? Whenever there's a female involved in a murder, that it's, it's all of a sudden like front page news, super important. Oh, a woman did it, a woman did it. Like a woman can't snap. I just, whatever. So Eileen is now on trial and you know they have their star witness and all that with Ty but she gets up there and she's just calm about things. You know they wanted to do an insanity plea but Eileen did begin her trial on a you know guilty plea. But then it was switched to not guilty, then it was switched back to guilty. I think this might have been like her prosecutor trying to kind of be like, hey, you need to just not put it all out there. Eileen was just straight up, this is what happened. With Eileen's first kill, she actually did say that the man assaulted her brutally and that she killed him in self-defense. And many people look at that like, oh, it's an excuse. Oh, she just, she just, she just excusing herself up, saying, yeah, I self-defense murdered this guy. But in truth, this guy served 10 years in jail, in frickin' prison, not just jail, but in prison for rape. So to me, she kind of did the world a favor because, I mean, this guy's out there still you know, served his time in prison and still out there sexually assaulting people. I mean, yeah, she kind of did the world a favor by taking him out. He, it's like he couldn't control his own self, so she just like handled it. Boom, done, bye. And she also said that the other five victims that she was being charged with were also um, from sexual assault and they were self-defense. Like I said, going back to the beginning, the prostitution is one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. No matter where you are, it is one of the most dangerous things. You are putting your life on the line every time you get into some stranger's car. You are, I mean, if you're armed, good, but that could be taken from you and used against you as well. So for her to say it was self-defense on every one of them, it is plausible. And I will, when I, at the end, the end I will explain to you why it's more plausible. Um, basically, there's there's a high rate of rapes and sexual assaults in uh, prostitution, 
And some of you out there I know are going to be like, well, they're prostitutes, so that's what... No. No, no, no. They're out there making their money. Yes, they are selling sex for money, but they're out there hustling to try to make money. Yes, with sex, but they're not trying to go out there and get raped. Raped is against your will. This would be... The sex work is not against anybody's will. It's supposed to be a mutual agreement between a client and a prostitute. And nobody deserves to get raped. Nobody deserves that. Nobody deserves to get sexually assaulted. And she had already lived a life of that. So if this guy did, which is a high probability that this gentleman, the first kill, did do that since he had already been in prison for 10 years, 10 years for rape, it, it's a high probability that he did brutally rape her and she did lose her temper on him and she did kill him from self-defense to get away from him because there is such a high probability of women, of sex workers, getting raped. As the trial went on, they did have Ty get up there and confess, or not confess, but speak on half of, behalf of the prosecution against Eileen and I I can't imagine that must have been so heartbreaking for Eileen to go through to see the person that she thought actually loved her betray her like everybody seemed to betray her that was around her to betray her or hurt her the only one who didn't seem like he betrayed or hurt her was her husband that she divorced that he, he annulled but he just couldn't deal with what she was all about and I, I do think that he thought he could kind of change her and it would have been nice if he could it would have been fantastic if he could have cha changed her and she could have gotten into the life but she had gone through so much that it was just it was just obviously not going to happen for her on January 27th of 1992, um, the jury did find her guilty in the murder of the, you know, the rapist guy. The first one, you know, the one that served the time. He fe they found her guilty of murdering him in the first degree. And the first degree has to be like a planned murder. So sh with intent. So yeah. So she mur picked him up, basically this is what they're saying, she picked him up with the intent to murder him. And not that he picked her up, or not, she didn't pick him up, you get what I'm saying, like she picked him up as a client. And not like, like he maybe picked her up with the intent of raping her. But, you know, I digress, he, she was found guilty and sentenced with uh, first degree murder and sentenced to death for killing the rapist guy. Eileen also did plead guilty for the other murders and also later confessed to another murder, but that body was never found. But she pled guilty to all of these. And she did get the um, death penalty for all of them. That was the sentence, death penalty. For blush today, we're going to use the Tarte's Life of the Party. During Eileen's time in jail, she spent 10 years on death row. She did interviews, she wrote books, and um, people were just constantly wanting her story. And for her, I'm sure that was just, it was just like everybody was trying to take more from her. So she did do her own thing and wrote some books and um, she was telling people her story of what happened. During her time in jail, she also got adopted by a 44-year-old woman named Arlene Prail. She saw her on TV and basically was like, I think this, this person has a bigger purpose. She saw something in Eileen that no one else had seen before and she really just wanted to help her 
and they, she was legally adopted by this woman. She just, it's sad because Eileen also gave up all of her appeals. She didn't want to even appeal it. In listening to her, um, one of her interviews, she was just like, oh, why would I want to be on this earth? It's so evil. It's filled with evil people. It's filled with evil things. And there ends the questioner, the interviewer talked about, like, do you want, do you feel like just everybody hurt you, everybody betrayed you? Something along those lines. And she was like, yeah, everybody just, you know, everybody's just let me down. Nobody has, I don't think she ever felt like anybody truly had her back, which is so incredibly sad to hear that. She did, she, like I said, from the very beginning, no place was safe. Nobody loved her. She was abused and tossed out. And it was said, like, even her grandfather let his friends come in and do things to her. Not, it was, she just had no sa safety, no nothing. And they call her the monster. We need to stop and reevaluate what we think about it as a monster. They compare her to like Jeffrey Dahmer, who I just did. They compare her to John Wayne Gacy and people like that. I find it very hard to um, compare her to any of them. In 2002, Governor Jeb Bush decided to give a stay of execution because he wanted to see if she was truly insane. Like, people were saying, a court-appointed like lawyer was say, really concerned with the fact that she had given up all of her appeals and everything like that. She was just done with this earth. earth everyone had let her down. Even Ty, who she thought had loved her, and she had helped take care of Ty, and they just, it literally, and if you stop and you look at her life, every single person failed her. Every single person. Every adult in her life, every person she loved in her life failed her. So she was just fed up and done. And this, she had found God and she was, she even said she was going to move on to a better place. But they were like, no, 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 this is not the talk of a sane person. No, I'm pretty sure she was sane. She was just fed up. After the three psych evals had discovered that she was indeed sane, this is a color pop clock shot, shot clock, shot clock, shot clock lippy lip liner. So after she had done many interviews and many psych evals, she was sane and she was ready to go. Now her adoptive mom, Arlene, did want her to stay alive. She really felt like she had a like a bigger purpose to than just to come here and die but Eileen she was done she was tired she was tired and I don't blame her I really don't it, it was just such a she had lived such a hard life the lippy stick and this is in the color This is in the color cami. Anyways, so after this, they deemed her sane and you have to be deemed sane enough to understand the death penalty and the reason why you're getting the death penalty. I didn't actually know that that was what made you sane or not sane when it came to the criminal justice, but that's what um, was explained is that you have to understand your crimes and you have to understand that you got the death, you're getting the death penalty because of it. So you're being put to death because of these crimes that you did. 
Just going to go ahead and curl my lashes and use some Huda Beauty Legit Lashes for my mascara. So in an interview, she had also said, like, basically, everyone had betrayed her. I 100% can agree with that from her point of view because looking at it like looking at her life reading everything that I read even watching the movies um, there's actually an opera for Eileen Warnos uh, and it's, it was done in San Francisco California books movies to add a little gloss we're just gonna use ColourPop's So Glossy in kind of a obsessed because this next part I'm just gonna have to like kind of read to you because I'm not gonna be able to get it right and I don't wanna mess up her last words but I will tell you her last she off she did actually did not have a full meal she for her last meal she just got some coffee that's all she asked for just coffee if you get a chance to watch any of her um, interviews you will probably see maybe the same thing that I saw unless or maybe not I don't know everybody's entitled to their own opinion that's why I have this video that's why I have this YouTube channel I'm gonna do some Milani setting spray okay so on October 9th of 2002 Eileen Warnos was taken to the um, chain of lethal injection and she was just ready to be done with this place and her words were as follows her last words were as follows I'd let just like to say I'm sailing with the rock and I'll be back like Independence Day with Jesus June 6th like the movie big mothership and all I'll be back now does that sound crazy yes but Famous last words, right? Her ashes were scattered by a tree near where she grew up. And I really think they should have been scattered out in the ocean or something nice. Because her childhood was not great. So why scatter, scatter her ashes in a place that she doesn't have good memories? Maybe she has some good memories in Florida. So I wanted to talk about some of the things. Why I think that her, her self-defense um, plea was actually pretty authentic. At least from my point of view, I think it was authentic. Because 44% to 75% of all sex workers especially women and transgender women will experience or have experienced some type of sexual assault in their career as a sex worker. They also, like I said, have twice the amount of chances to be murdered than their actual clients do. Though sexual assault is still prevalent in the male sex work com community, it is less likely than in the female or transgender woman sex work field. The average sex workers that are killed during the year are 204 out of 100,000. And an overall 68% of all sex workers have experienced some type of sex crime against them. This is a dangerous field that they went into, that Eileen chose to go into because her life had been so horrific in the beginning and she really had little to no education. She had been sexually abused, physically abused by everyone in her family it seemed like. I mean her dad alone was in jail for sexual molestation of a child and he committed suicide. I mean it's like she was just bombarded with 
horrific act after horrific act against her. And then she thought she found someone that loved her, and it didn't work out. And she ended up betraying her to the police and sold her out. You can have your opinions on this case. If we want to have a discussion in the comments, feel free. Um, I'll also post some of this on Instagram. Feel free to have your own comments. Just keep them nice and civil. This is going to be one of those where everybody has their own opinion, but me, I look at this like she was kind of set up for failure at the beginning. She was set up to do this and go through this, and unfortunately, this is what happened. And so many children who have experienced um, sexual abuse, and trauma of sort of the same sort have turned to life like this a life of crime drugs prostitution dangerous situations toxic relationships and believe that this is just the norm because their mind is wired that way if you have gone through this or are going through it I hope that you are able to seek out someone that will help you. Go to the authorities. This is a very delicate subject and I hope you guys really do find some type of peace if you are going through this. My thoughts are with you. As always, take care of yourselves, look out for each other, be kind to each other, and I will see you in the next video. Take care now.